Hello, my name is Kim Hornsby. I'm the Jackson County 4-H Agent for Youth Development. I work for the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, Food, and the Environment Cooperative Extension Service. First of all, I want to thank everybody for all of the positive feedback that I've been getting. I've had a lot of texts, phone calls, comments, and of course likes and shares on the videos. So I thought that was great to see that everybody's learning and, and enjoying the videos while we're all kind of quarantined right now. I want to start off by doing just a little bit of a review of what we learned in our last video. So last week we talked about handling and how we are supposed to approach and, and uh, work around our horses and just to be on the safe side. We also talked a, a little bit about equine psychology and I gave you some tips on how to handle your horse. Uh, we also last week talked about knot tying and we learned about three different knots. The first knot that we learned about was the quick release knot. The second one was a uh, bank robber's knot. And then the third knot that we learned about was called a bowline or bowline knot. And that was a hard, more of a hard tie knot. That's not a quick release. So we talked about the differences in those. If you want to, if you missed that episode and you want to learn about those things, then go be sure to go to our uh, our Jackson County Extension Service YouTube channel. And there's actually a horse sense playlist there now. So. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is saddles and saddling. So the title of this video will be Saddles and Saddling. Uh, we have a lot of different equipment laid out here today, and this is Western. Unfortunately, for, uh, I don't have a lot of English tack for you. Those of you who are English writers, I apologize for that. Uh, but I will say that that saddle fit and, and being able to saddle your horse properly, it, it applies to all saddles. So we'll talk more about that later. Uh, the first thing that I want to get started with today is I want to talk about uh, saddle pads because that, that's the first thing that you're going to put on your horse. So we're just going to do it in order. Uh, so I've got a couple different saddle pads here. This is, a, this is a wool saddle pad. And so I'm going to talk first about the difference between synthetic and natural fibers. And so this is, since this is a wool saddle pad, this is a natural fiber, it's made, for, it comes from sheep. And I much prefer natural fibers on my horse's skin to any kind of synthetic made fibers. And so uh, this is a really, really high quality saddle pad. It's a very expensive pad. And so that's, that's the difference kind of between a, between a, a natural pad and, and a synthetic pad is, is with a natural pad, you have more, a lot more costs associated with that. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. So as you ride and as you grow and you get, uh, as you go throughout your experiences as a rider, then you can, you can actually get a pretty decent collection of tack. Um, and, and it's definitely worth the extra amount that you'll pay for it. So this is a, this is a five-star pad. Let's talk about the thickness of the pads. It's an inch and a quarter thick. Uh, I prefer a thicker pad, even though you won't have as much contact with your horse uh, through your seat with a thicker pad, but I, I do prefer a thicker pad. The longer that you plan to ride your horse, if you're just going to be riding your horse for an hour a day, then you know you can get by with a thinner pad. Or if you're going to be barrel racing or doing something like that, you, you can definitely get by with a, a thinner pad. But if you're going to be doing a lot of ranch work, or if you're going to be roping, or if you're going to be trail riding for six or eight hours a day, then you want something on your horse horse's back that's going to protect it. And so in my opinion, if I was going to, if I was going to invest money uh, on anything, I would invest in a good pad because that's on your horse's back. And if your horse's back gets hurt or rubbed, then you're out. You can't ride that horse anymore until it's healed up. And then uh, you could also cause some things that, that may not heal properly at all. So we want to definitely consider buying a good, a good pad. Uh, like I said, this is a five star and I have, I've really had good luck with this company. They do stand behind their product and it's American made. So uh, it's a good pad. The next kind of pad that I'll talk about is a synthetic pad. This is also a good pad. I haven't had any problems with this pad. Um, it's got a neoprene underside. It does not breathe as well as, as the wool pad does. But if you are, you know, if you're looking for, it's got a canvas top on it. If you're looking for just an entry level pad and you know, this is the best that you can do, then, you know, by all means, it, it's, a, it's a decent pad too. So uh, you kind of have to find what works for you and your budget and your horse. But if you want the cream of the crop, I definitely recommend getting a wool a wool pad over any type of synthetic material. So that's just a little tip on saddle pads. The next thing that we're going to talk about are saddle accessories. Um, 
I have several laid out here. The first thing that I want to talk about is what we call a breast collar or a breast plate. I've heard some people call it that. This one right here is my favorite kind. This is called a pulling collar, and I'll show you how it attaches to the saddle in just a minute. But basically, this uh, attaches just like that, and the pulling collar comes down from the pommel of the saddle. And... Um, I, and it goes underneath between the between the front legs. I feel like this is a really good sa uh, this is a really good breast collar if you're going to be going up and down hills a lot, uh, or if you're if you're going to be using your horse for a lot of ranch work if you're going to be tied off to anything. So that, this is a good this is a good uh, breast collar for that. This is another kind of breast collar, and of course this one is made of leather, but this one is made of neoprene. And this one actually is probably the most commonly used kind. Uh, of course, it goes right here to this. It attaches this D-ring and it goes around the horse's chest and back to this other D-ring where, where your girth goes. Uh, the pulley, pulley collar attaches up here. And then this also goes between the legs. Like I said, this is a synthetic material. It's made of neoprene. So that's two different types of breast collars. The next kind of uh, Western breast collar, I don't have one of these, is called a tripping collar. And uh, that's, that's more of, I think a lot of ropers use that, that kind of collar. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is front cinches or front, front girths, we call them. There are three different kinds that I have laid out here. This one is very dirty, so they're not supposed to look like this, but um, it is made of alpaca, which is, is kind of like a wool. And uh, so this, this is a really good cinch that, like I said, any natural fibers is a lot more expensive uh, than, than uh, synthetic fibers. This is a shoe fly, it's attached under the girth. It's just made of horse hair and it keeps the flies off if, you want, if you're wondering what that is. Okay, this is another type. This is a Weaver Smart cinch. I really like this type of cinch a lot. It's, it's really easy to cinch it up. Um, this roller buckle here makes it makes it easier probably for some of you guys that are younger and have a hard time saddling your horse. So this is a good one. Um, it's got wool underneath. This one's a little bit dirty too. Uh, and while we're on this, <laughs> we want to just kind of remind you guys that these, these are to the point where they need to be soaked and, and cleaned. And we're going to do a separate video on tight cleaning later. So, uh, but these definitely, your, your girth, this one's not too bad, but anytime that this excess hair gets in it, you just need to make sure that you, you know, get that hair out. If you've got any dirt in, on the girth, that needs to come off because that can rub your horse up. And then you're out for a while too. If you get, if you get a rub or something, then that keeps you from being able to ride. This is a, this is also a, a neoprene girth. Um, these are not my favorites, but like I said, if this is all you can, if this is all you can afford, then it will work. And, and then, you know, just work toward getting some better gear as you go. Okay, so those are front cinches. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about are back cinches. This is, a lot of you may not have back cinches on your saddle. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people don't ride with them. If you do have a back cinch, there are a couple different kinds. Uh, this one is a, a lot wider and flatter and any kind of... Um, any kind of material that you can get that's wider and flatter like that, I prefer that. And the reason why is because it distributes the pressure more. So this one is going to is going to be kind of it's going to be a little more comfortable for the horse because it's going to distribute that uh, when that saddle comes up, it's going to distribute that a little bit more on the horse's belly, and then that way it'll be more comfortable to the horse. So this is just another type of back cinch. It's just a little bit thinner. You can see that, and it's not too thin. It's this is still a good cinch. So. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is saddle bags. There are all kinds of different types of saddle bags. Uh, I love these saddle bags just for going on a little day ride. They hold what I need. A friend of mine gave me these and I, I really like them a lot. I'll show you how to attach those. There are bigger types of saddle bags um, that you can get all kinds of pockets in them, synthetic materials. Like I said, I really like uh, I really like natural materials and these are leather, so. And then this is what is called a pommel bag. And so this attaches up here to the front of the saddle and this holds a lot of gear uh, inside of it. You can see there are little straps there go around the front of the saddle here. And this is really nice and because it's handy, you can get to it really easy. The last thing on my list here, 
this is a, it's the top of a boot, but, and these come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. My husband actually made this one, but this is a water bottle holder. And I just put that right here on the saddle and attach it here. Um, and then it holds the water bottle in place. It's a really great accessory because you can get to your water bottle easily if you're gonna be out a lot. If you're training or if you're just if you're just riding around your farm or your house or in the arena, these a lot of these things you may wanna leave off, but I wanted to go ahead and cover them. That way I could be pretty thorough. I also have here a set of hobbles, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but that's something that I always keep on my horse. That way if I need to, uh, if I need to get off my horse and do something for a little bit with, and I don't have a place to tie to, I can hobble my horse up and I don't have to worry about him leaving or going off. And he can also, they can also graze with these on, so that's a really nice accessory as well. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are different types of saddles. And I've got three different types of Western saddles here, but there are many, many more than this. And I just want you guys to know that. So it's important that when you're looking for a saddle that you choose a saddle that suits your job that you're wanting to, whatever you're wanting to do. So uh, the first one here, this is, a, this is a, a Billy Cook. It's a high country rancher saddle. And this, this is a really heavy, uh, heavy saddle. The tree, which is what all of this is built around, it's on the inside of it, you can't see it, but the tree is actually made of wood and so it does make it heavier, but it also makes it more durable. And you can do a lot more like ranch work. If you'll notice, the seat is slick. It's, it's a saddle that's really made to stay in for a long time. Uh, it's a comfortable saddle, and it's, it's just a really tough, durable saddle. It's made, like I said, it's made to do a lot of ranch work with. If you'll notice, um, I have, well, I've got a night latch. This is a night latch right here. And that way, if, if you've got a horse that's a little bit harder to handle or you've got one that has a tendency to buck, that night latch is actually a little bit easier to hold on with than the horn. So it's, it's just kind of a, a little extra piece there that, that helps you stay in. Uh, I do want to draw some attention here to this part of this saddle. These are the swells, these are called swells, and it's on the pommel. But if you'll notice, the swells come out and what that helps you do is to keep is to hook your knees up under that saddle, and then that way, if a horse is is bucking or if if a horse spooks or something, you've got something to, more to hold on to. So that's this is a ranch saddle. Um, it's like I said, it's a really good made saddle, and it's it has uh, it has strings on it here. Some of them don't have strings. Uh, some of them do. It just depends on what they're going to be doing, what you're going to be doing with them. This next type of saddle, this is called a a, a barrel saddle. Let me just turn around here. I forgot. Uh, this is a barrel saddle and this saddle is a lot lighter. Uh, it has a different type of tree on the inside. It's a fiberglass tree and this would just be a really nice saddle if you're young or, uh, or, or, you, or you have trouble getting your saddle on your horse. This is a really good little saddle for probably some of you guys. Uh, I also like this, the uh, the pommel here. It's got, it has, uh, you know, these bumps here like I was talking about on this one and that keep you in, in the saddle. You can hook your knees up underneath that and stay in a little bit better. If you, if you can imagine if you're barrel racing, uh, of course, turning those barrels and, and running around those barrels, you would need something that would help keep you in the saddle a little bit better. Uh, this, one, this one does not have a back cinch on it. And a lot of the barrel saddles do not. Uh, some of them do, but a lot of them don't. You notice that the skirt here is uh, rounded and this one is not really round, but it's not really square either. And so those those are a couple of things you know that you can that that you can take kind of take into consideration. Um, this is a this is called a wade saddle, and it's called a slick fork saddle, and it's it doesn't have these bumps here and you can attach some buck and rolls to it right here. I don't usually ride this saddle with buck and rolls because I use it on, on a, one of my more seasoned horses and, uh, it, and it's just more comfortable to me without those buck and rolls on it. So this is a really good saddle for uh, ranch work and things like that. It does have a back cinch. It's a heavy made saddle. It's also a Billy Cook. Um, I'm pretty high in, in those saddles. But then it, it also has, um, you know, the wide flat, back cinch. Uh, got a rope strap on it here. So if, if you do, I don't, I don't actually rope or anything, but um, there are a lot of cases that I've used a rope in, in different situations. So it's got a little, nice little rope strap on it there. Okay. So we've talked about a ranch saddle, a barrel saddle, and then a wade saddle. 
There are all different kinds of saddles, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, find a saddle that suits your needs. One place that I think is a really great resource is called horsesaddleshop.com. They have all, all different sorts of resources for you to uh, look at different types of saddles on there. They have, there are trail saddles, there are cutter, cutting saddles, uh, they're just, uh, there's a, basically a saddle for any kind of different need. So check, if you're gonna actually pour some money into a saddle and buy a good saddle, make sure that you, first of all, that you check out what, you know, what your options are and that you know your options before buying. So just be an informed buyer, know what you're gonna use it for because that's a, that's a big investment. Okay, let's talk now about the different parts of the saddle. And I'm not gonna go into too much depth with this. I'm gonna kind of be quick with it because you guys have access to that. And that website that I was telling you about, uh, horsesaddleshop.com, they actually have some really good resources as far as like the different parts of the saddle go. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. So this is called the pommel, this part of the saddle. You've got your horn, okay? And moving on down here, let's talk. This is the stirrup, okay? This is the fender. Your seat, you've got the skirt, you have, this is the billet, and this is the latigo. And that just kind of helps you guys out with just a, a little bit. So if you're needing to buy a new a replacement part or something for your saddle, you know what to look for. The last thing that I want to talk about is the saddle gullet. And uh, what I mean by that is it's the distance between here and here. So this is the gullet right here. And so there's two different things you need to consider before, you're, before you buy a saddle for a specific horse. And the first thing is the, the width of the gullet, which is the distance, or the length of the gullet, which is the distance between uh, one point to the other here. The next thing that you need to think about is the angle of the gullet. So if it's a steeper pitch, then it's gonna, be kind, it's gonna look more like this. And if it's not as steep of a pitch, then it's gonna look like this. So you need to think about your horse's shoulders, how the horse's shoulders are made, and how also how, how, how much withers that your horse has. Like if, it's, if it has a, a, lot, a lot higher withers or if the withers are more, made more low and it's, it's more round. So I'm gonna go ahead and saddle Shiloh. And the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're starting with a freshly groomed horse. And no matter what, if you've already groomed them, I always like to run my hand down by their back and just make sure that there's no mud or lumps or anything in there. Also like to rub down here along the cinch and then underneath here. And especially if you're gonna have a back girth, you wanna, you wanna feel under there too. And I'm, what I'm doing is just feeling for any lumps or dirt or mud or anything that's stuck to his coat. That way when I go to put on his, his uh, tack, he is not going, I'm not gonna put it anywhere that's gonna rub. So uh, just always do a little check there, even, even under here where their breast collar is, there's a little something right there. Uh, little lump of hair, and so I got that out just so it doesn't rub him. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your saddle pad and you wanna work from the shoulder right here. You wanna work kinda close to the horse and you're just gonna take the saddle pad and you're just gonna put it, place it up on the horse's back. I see a lot of people that, you know, throw that up there real hard and, and everything. You want, you want the saddling experience to be, you want it to be a good experience for the horse so that they don't, uh, so that they don't, feel uncomfortable. And one thing you wanna make sure that you do when you put this saddle pad on is you want the center of this saddle pad to be right in the center of that horse's back, right on his spine. Uh, when you first put the pad on, you wanna put it up here and then scoot it down. And what that does, it causes the horse's hair to lay flat underneath that pad. And so it'll just be a little bit more comfortable fit. You want this pad to be between the horse's shoulders and his hip, about like that. Now, a lot of you will probably have your horse tied up, and that's good. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, for, for sake of being able to do the video, I am, I'm just ground tying him for now. So, if, these Western saddles really have, this saddle weighs probably about 50 or 60 pounds with everything on it. And so, um, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to throw this saddle up. And so, if you're a little bit, uh, if, if you're a little bit smaller, you know, you may have to have some help, but if you're not, then you should be able to pick your saddle up. And I just like to put my arm underneath here. And I've seen this, pe I've seen people do this different ways, but I put my, my left hand, I put it through there underneath the pommel. And then my right hand, I put back here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do 
is, I, and I see a lot of people do it this way. A lot of people are trying to hoss it up like that right there. You don't wanna do it that way, okay? This is the proper way to do it. So you're just gonna take a little bit of a swing, okay? And then just set it up on your horse. Now, I didn't have these things attached because I had them laid out, but you should not unattach all of your tack, all, all these different straps and things. You need to leave those on there and I'll show you guys when I take it off in just a minute. I'll show you guys where to put these things and how to tie them up. That way when you, when you store your saddle, then it'll be a lot easier for you to, uh, to store that saddle. So I'm just gonna, re, I'm gonna reattach. And what I'm also gonna do while I'm over here is I'm gonna check to make sure that none of my strings are hung up underneath my saddle. Your saddle may or may not have strings, so I'm just gonna attach my girth here. Okay, this one with that, with this little strap here, that's gonna attach to your girth as well, so you just wanna make sure that you attach that. Make sure that it's facing forward, that way it will attach. This strap slides down in here, if you have a back cinch. Okay, this is the breast collar, and as I was telling you all earlier, this is a pulling collar, and it attaches to the pommel here. So, there we go. And I probably have a lot of straps on my saddle that you guys may not have. Let me go ahead and turn him back around here. Okay, the first strap that you wanna attach is take my latigo out here, and I'm gonna reach under here and get my girth. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but this one has two different buckle, two different spots where I can put it. If yours has two like that, then you're gonna put it in the first one here. And you're just gonna pull it through. Okay, now you're gonna take the latigo, the end of the latigo, and you're gonna put it down through the, through the D-ring here. Now this latigo is really long, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this back part of, this, of the cinch. Now, right here is where a lot of people get into trouble. What a lot of people wanna do is they wanna go ahead and cinch that horse up tight. I'm just gonna barely cinch this up, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it on there. I'm even gonna let this little, uh, well, it's pretty long, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here. This is a keeper. I'm gonna put it in my keeper. Okay, now this saddle is just barely on this horse. So what I'm gonna do now is reach underneath here and get that back cinch, and I'm just gonna do the same thing with it. I'm just gonna barely put it on. And then I'm gonna go, go ahead and buckle up the, the breast collar here. So I'm gonna get everything buckled on my horse before I ever cinch him up. And then that way, he doesn't feel like I'm taking the breath out of him. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these two straps to the D-ring. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I, I attach both of those straps. There's a front D-ring and a back D-ring on my cinch. And I attach those two straps. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna check all of my, all of my straps over here, make sure none of those are underneath the saddle. Couple things, the first thing is a lot of times the girth will uh, fold up underneath itself and get stuck underneath the cinch. And so you wanna make sure that, that that girth is good and flat, okay? A couple other things that you wanna think about. First of all, if you've got a saddle pad that fits your saddle correctly, then there should just be about an inch. So this saddle pad is actually a little bit too big for this saddle. And so you want about an inch of, uh, an inch, two inches at the most of, of saddle pad hanging out from underneath your saddle. Another thing that you wanna think about is your saddle should sit in the middle of your horse's back. A lot of people wanna put their saddles way up here and then what I see, you see that? You see right there? I should be able to slide my hand between my horse's elbow and the cinch. Because what'll happen is if this cinch gets cl too close to this elbow, then there, there'll be a rub right there. And it takes a long time for that to heal up and you can't ride. Okay, so I've checked everything. I've made sure that, my, that everything is fitting properly. All of the straps are nice and flat against my horse's stomach, against his belly. 
against all parts of the saddle. The saddle should be, like I said, in the middle of the horse's back. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take him and let him walk off just a little bit. But what this does is this just kinda lets everything get into place to where it's sort of comfortable, okay? And so now, I'm ready to tighten. So I'm just gonna take it and pull up. Now, if I pull from, from this direction, from the bottom up like this, then I can get just a little bit, I can get it to tighten up just a little bit more. But if I pull like this from the, from the top up, then I feel like I can, I can tighten it even better. Uh, these smart cinches are really good for you, those of you who have trouble tightening your cinch enough. So I've tightened it twice now. And I'm also gonna tighten my back cinch. Now, it's really important with your back cinch that that back cinch lays, lays flat and snug. You don't want it to be really tight, but you want it to be snug on your horse's stomach. The reason for that is because if, if you get out on a trail ride or if you're doing some arena work or something and your horse uh, kicks at a fly, they can get their foot stuck underneath this. So you always wanna check that and it needs to be nice and snug. You wanna, I've got like a hand underneath there and so that's, that's tight enough. The same deal with my, with my breast collar. That breast collar should be laying nice and flat. It should be snug, but not tight. So you've gotta, you've gotta think about that as well. A couple more things that I wanna mention is when you are saddling your horse, you always wanna kinda, if, if you're tightening a girth, either be it the, the front girth or the back girth, you wanna always make sure that you're in this position when you're tightening and that you're not standing back here because what could happen is if your horse were to kick, and I was a minute ago because I was trying to show you guys um, uh, what, what it looked like. I was trying to stand out of the way of the camera. So some of the things that I'm doing are uh, or to help you all see. So I wanna make sure that I mention that you should be standing about, you know, at your, at your horse's shoulder. Remember last week we talked about that we should stand close to the horse when we're doing things and we shouldn't stand far away from it. So always, you know, keep those things in mind. Um, so the third time that you're gonna tighten your cinch up is after you've gotten the saddle and you've ridden for just a little bit. And so, you know, ride for five, or si five minutes or so, get off and tighten your cinch because they ha some of them do have a tendency to blow up. And usually the reason why they have that tendency is because somebody has just immediately gone in there and tightened up the cinch on them. So make sure that when you tighten the cinch, the cinch up, it's a three-step process and you wanna first snug it up just to where you can get the other straps fixed. And then you wanna take that second, that uh, go ahead and, and snug it up the second time. But then in finally, the third time after you've ridden for about five minutes or so, and they'll start to let that air out of their stomach. Um, the, the, the more comfortable that you make your horse during this process, the more quiet that they will stand for you. And that's an important thing to think about. And I, I know a lot of people, you know, they just kind of want to rush and get their saddle on a horse. But this is really the time that you have to kind of bond with your horse and, and to kind of correct some problems. If they're dancing around and moving around a little bit, you know, get them, get them out and do a little bit of groundwork with them and make them stand there. Uh, you don't want them dancing around and, and, then, and then your saddle falls off and then you've got a whole new set of problems. Either they break your saddle or some kind of, uh, or, or uh, they develop some kind of fear for, of the saddle, which is, another, is a whole new issue. So a lot of you may not have saddles that have, um, have a buckle like this. And so one thing I wanted to do is show those of you who did not have a saddle that buckles how to tie a Western saddle. This one's a little bit difficult because it's got this type of plate on it. It's got that kind of rigging on it. So I'm gonna take the end of my latigo. I'm gonna go down through this D-ring, trying to get it to where you guys can see. I'm gonna pull this end of this latigo out. Okay, I'm gonna bring this around the front and I'm gonna go back up behind this D-ring and pull the latigo through the front there. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this down through this little loop that I made. Now I'm not going to tighten it up just right there. Um, like, like I said, I do the same thing. I'd walk my horse off and then I come back and I do my second tightening. When you do that second tightening, if you want to snug it up just a little bit and then you need to pull right here. And what that'll do is it'll bring all of that extra leather to that side. Okay. And then I'm going to pull it through here. 
and I'm going to pull this one up first. And then the last thing I'm going to do is pull this tail. And because of the type of rigging that this has, um, it's, it's a little bit, this, this tie doesn't look like it would, like it normally does on, if you have just a regular D ring, but this plate rigging is a little bit different. Most girths have two D rings, one in the front and one in the back. Then you need to make sure that those D rings are positioned right in the center of the horse's barrel. And if they're not, you need to go over to the other side and uh, loosen or tighten the cinch from the from the billet. And that way, those those rings will line up right in the center. And the next thing after we got the saddle on that I want to talk about is the white this is saddle fit. If your saddle is not fitting properly, then then. It, it will rub your horse's back and it'll cause a lot of problems. A lot, it could cause damage, it can cause behavioral problems that, that you'll have to work through later. So you want, to, you want a saddle that fits good. Like I said, that gullet length or the width between the gullet is really important. If you've got a horse with narrow shoulders, you want a more narrow gullet. You want to make sure that this saddle fits snug, okay, but that it's not tight. So if you look right here, okay, if you look right here, you see that this this whole piece right here is sitting nicely on Shiloh's shoulders. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But you see how that, that sits pretty snug there on his shoulders? This saddle fits him perfectly. Okay, it's, it's nice and flat against his shoulders. Nice and snug. Okay, nothing is up and, or flapping. You should not buy a pad to make your saddle fit. If, you're, if your saddle's too big without a pad, then your saddle's too big. So think about that. The way to tell if your saddle fits correctly or not is after you've ridden for 20 minutes or so, if you've ridden, you know, and gotten your horse kind of worked up to where they've started sweating just a little bit here on their shoulders, take that saddle off. Underneath where your saddle is, then it should be, it should be wet. So you should see like a perfect saddle of sweat, basically. Um, if it's not, then you may see some places like, I, I know a lot of horses where the saddle doesn't fit them under their shoulders. And so you may see some, some places where there's no sweat. That means your saddle isn't fitting correctly. And there are a few things that you can do for that. And it depends. Uh, you'll, if, if you're noticing some problems, like your horse is kind of getting, uh, if it's getting kind of hateful with you as you ride, uh, if it's getting kind of nervous, swishing its tail, pinning its ears when you try to get on, uh, or you may see some white hairs develop underneath. Any of those things are kind of signs of poor saddle fit if you've been riding quite a bit. So look for those signs. Let your horse tell you if your saddle fits, if, if your saddle fits correctly or not. And so just to kind of give you guys an idea, this saddle, as it fits on this horse, should have contact all over this horse's back. Because if you've got more contact, let's say you've got more contact right here at the seat, then that's not distributing the weight properly. So the, the weight, you want the weight to be distributed through the whole saddle, not just through one part of the horse. The next thing I'm gonna do is show you guys how to untack your horse. It's really important that you do it in this order. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna take this breast collar off, just unbuckle, unbuckle it, and you're gonna do everything from the near side here, okay? So all, everything that you do will be from this side you're gonna unbuckle all your pieces from this side. I see a lot of people who unbuckle over there and then they gotta walk around their horse and back and forth. So I'll just unbuckle everything from this side and then I'll show you how to, how to tie it up and lay it up on that other side. So I'm gonna unbuckle this breast collar here. Make sure that you take that little snap off. Just reach around my neck, my horse's neck here, flip this up over the, over the seat of the saddle. The next thing that I'm gonna take off is the back cinch and I'm just gonna unbuckle it. Okay, and remember it is attached under here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take that off. Okay, the last piece that I'm gonna take off is the front cinch. And so just gonna pull up on this and that's gonna release that buckle. And I just take both fingers and put them behind that and just pull that latigo out. Now, this latigo, if you'll take it and fold it in half and then stick it through your D-ring, you won't have any straps hanging when you when you take your saddle off. It'll just be nice and folded up right there. Okay, that's going to keep it that's going to keep it from from dragging and getting dirty. And you don't want dirt on your sa on your cinch or on your latigo because that's going to get on your horse's skin, and you don't want that. All right. And I'm going to turn him around. I wouldn't usually do this, but I know he can handle it, and I'm just going to turn him around so that he can so you guys can see 
how I put these other straps up, okay? So I'm gonna take this back cinch and I'm gonna run it through the D on the front cinch right here. Just like this. All right. And so now I've got it, I've got this little, this little D here. And I'm gonna run it up through my keeper right here on my saddle. If your if your keeper has been broken or fallen off or something, I'm just gonna put this buckle in the keeper. Okay, and so that it that's got all of my everything out of the way. But if your keeper is broken or or it's fallen off or something, you can reorder these. That's that's another thing I want to tell you guys. You can reorder those. Um, so I've got all of my straps are put up on the saddle and I'm ready to unsaddle my horse. So I'm just gonna pull this off. I'm gonna be as gentle with his back as I can so I don't rub him or anything. And then whenever I put my saddle on the stand, this is really important, you don't ever want to leave your saddle pad underneath your saddle. Because number one, it won't dry out properly. You'll get fungus and mold and things like that in your pad. But then also, um, you don't want to leave your saddle pad on top of your saddle because it'll, that'll cause your saddle to mold. So make sure that you've got a separate place in your tack room to keep your saddle pad so that it'll dry out and you won't, have, you won't get fungus or any kind of uh, mold on it that way. This concludes our saddling episode. And if you guys have any questions, make sure that you comment about those. You have to con If you have a question, make sure that you either send it to me on the Jackson County KY Facebook page or comment on the video that's posted on the page because I won't see it if somebody shared it and then you ask the question from another page. So make sure that when you ask a question that you ask on the Jackson County page and the, or that you send it to me on the on the on the Facebook page. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure that you like and you share. Uh, and if you guys have any suggestions or anything, then make sure that you, that you send those to us uh, and we'll see you next week. Please scan the QR code and take a brief survey that will help us with future episodes of Horse Sense.